that's why here in the church, we got to make sure nobody else proclaims the name of the Lord that we do. We got to keep fighting to get through. So one of the things that some of us pastors have started is that before we go into service, we're going to call each other. Not to gospel, gossip, but to pray with each other. Because you have some pastors on this morning who have decided they're not even going to their churches. Because of the way that the year closed out, they say they don't see a better year coming. So as we were praying this morning, I know it took a little long. But we're praying for one another. We're praying for the church because people are walking away from the church. It's because God's people aren't proclaiming the Lord anymore. So as you prepare yourselves to come to the altar this morning, come praying for a fresh look upon the Lord. Come allowing yourself to be a living witness for the Lord. And I know I'm saying proclaiming a lot, but today's Sunday school lesson was such a powerful word to the church this day. Asking all the mothers to make their way down. The only way that this church is going to move forward is if there's some curses broken within the church. How many believe that the churches are under a curse? Curses that came upon churches a long time ago. Churches that they are suffering through. But as it was said in Sunday school this morning, when it came down to Gideon, God removed those individuals that made the church no good. When they went into battle, they won over thousands because God put those individuals there who were willing to fight. They were willing to fight the fight of the Lord and not of themselves. Praise God this morning. We said put in the hospital, but God allowed her to make it here, didn't he? Amen. Oh Lord God, we're leaning and trusting upon you. 
renewing us a right spirit, O oh Lord God. Help us uh, that we may begin to worship you in spirit and in truth. Help us, O oh Lord God, that we won't look at things going on around us, O oh Lord God, but that we will look on to you. That we won't look on to what is going on with other individuals, but we'll look on to you. Help us, O oh Lord God, that we may be more faithful to your church, O oh Lord God. More faithful to you, O oh Lord God, in everything that we do. Help us, O oh Lord God, that we may increase our time of serving you. That we may increase our giving unto you. This day, O oh Lord God, asking in the name of Jesus that you break any curses that is holding individuals back. Break any anger. Break anything that is holding individuals down, O oh Lord God. That they can praise you and praise you alone. That as we go through, O oh Lord God, that we know it's by your spirit and by your might. Right now in the name of Jesus, O oh Lord God, we fix Satan from this church, O oh Lord God. You don't have a place here anymore. We're removing you, O oh Lord God, and removing Satan to thank you right now, O oh Lord God. Thank you for a new spirit. Thank you for a new life. Thank you for a new direction. Thank you for a new way to go right now, O oh Lord God, in the name of Jesus.
there, wasn't they? Just when you didn't see a way out, isn't it amazing how the Lord allows you to see He was right there, wasn't he? Uh, for everything, he was right there. If you look back in 2012, you can see how he was right there. Amen. You know it wasn't by your power and by your might that you made it in. It was by the Lord's power and by the Lord's might. Amen. Influence. 
In other words, a Christian should have the power to change an individual to be what God wants them to be. Amen? Amen. A Christian should have a radiant life. A Christian, when they walk in the room, the room should be able to light up with the Spirit of God. Knowing that God is with that individual. When you walk in a room, a person should already be able to recognize that you are a child of God. But don't you know, the thing is, is that in order to be radiant, a person that is radiant glows with light. They're beaming with happiness. You know, one of the things that used to get on my nerves is when I saw a happy person. That person was just happy about everything. It didn't matter what was going on. They was just happy. You know, I had uh, our neighbor when I was growing up lost her husband. She loved her husband, but the thing was is that she was happy. She wasn't happy that he passed. She was just a happy person. She was one of those people that when something happened and you heard her at the door, she was able to bring happiness through the door with her. Uh -huh. That's what a Christian should be able to do, beaming with light, beaming with happiness, so that when you walk through the door, everybody knows that everything going to be all right. No matter what's going on in your situation, you should be happy. No matter the circumstance, you should be beaming with happiness. That's one of the things that Christ is trying to teach us as we listen to him do his sermon on the mount. Wouldn't it just be so great that if we all could just live a radiant life, that no matter what happened, we was just happy. But I think it's come to the point that even in the Sunday school lesson, as I read it, God helped me to know that people got too many ideas that are clashing with his word. People are listening to too many things and looking at too many things that are clashing with what he would have us to do. How can you proclaim the word of God and you keep letting things of this world disrupt everything that God would have you to do? Isn't it amazing? How you can go through something and before you know it, you're blaming God for it. Wow. And can I stop here to say, the devil didn't have nothing to do with it. God didn't have nothing to do with it. That was just like Quit blaming God for everything that happened in your life. And just understand that some things are just life. Some things you go through are just life. Isn't it amazing how you can struggle in something for a lot of years? Never walk away because God, when he's in the middle of it, says, no matter what goes on, I'm here. And it's just life. Uh -huh. But I'd have to let you to know, on today, I'm still praying for a revival in God's church. Uh -huh. I'm still praying for a day of Pentecost when we all come together and the Spirit of God come down and touch each and every one of us that we may go out and begin to talk to people as God would have us to do. You can't restore no relationships if you ain't talking. You can't bring nobody to the Lord if you ain't talking. You can't be all that God wants you to be if you not talking. I know I was using the word ain't. Don't be trying to look at me. You can't do nothing if you're not talking. But I ask the Lord, what is hindering us as black people from having a revival? What keeps it from happening in our churches? Lord, we used to have revival where everybody ran to the church because they wanted to be revived by the word of God. What happened? Now he said, remember this. Things from our past keep us from moving forward. I don't know about you, but individuals used to come to church crying 
about things that happened in their past, asking the Lord, forgive me, that I may move forward to be all that you would have me to be. Uh -huh. The Lord is saying, quit trying to restore relationships with people. you got to restore your relationship with me. We're walking around talking about you blessed and you know you ain't. We're walking around talking about I'm highly favored when you know you ain't. Because how can you be blessed and highly favored and you don't even have a relationship with the Lord? Too many people are talking about the Lord. The Lord ain't did nothing. Because the bottom line is you can't have a relationship with nobody you ain't talking to. Isn't it amazing how people get mad at the Lord when they pray? After three years, they need something. And they pray and the Lord don't give it to them. They get mad. <laughs> bottom line is, the Lord ain't going to give you nothing because you ain't talked to them. You wonder why you're in the same situation again because you ain't talking. Don't you know? I know. That God is ready to pour out a blessing on his church. Oh, yes. But I also know this. He's not going to pour out a blessing until you're ready to receive it. Oh, Why he going to give you something and you're not ready to receive it? All you're going to do is just mess it up. Oh, I told him this morning, isn't it amazing how God just keeps blessing us? And we just, he just keeps wasting on us. And he keeps giving us another chance. He blessing us today. Somebody going to do something before the day over with and mess that all up. And God going to allow you to wake up tomorrow and move on with a new blessing. The question is, what relationships do we need to restore? What relationships does the church need to restore? What needs to take place in our own personal lives, our own attitude is what will open the doors of the church. Don't you know ain't nobody just going to walk through the door because St. Joseph here. People pay attention to the attitude of the people. You walk in rejoicing, you walk out rejoicing, people going to say it must be something going on in there. Now I'm getting ready to touch a nerve. How can you say you blessed? I ain't judging nobody. But you leave out a middle of a service and go outside and smoke. And people know that church is going on. Don't church mean enough to you that you would stay in the building until church is over? People are paying attention to everything that the church does. Don't you know, I think we've gotten to the point where people really don't know what forgiveness is. In other words, can I tell you what forgiveness is, Rob? Let me talk to Rob here a minute. Forgiveness means give up on wanting to punish somebody. Give up on wanting to punish somebody. We all at some point in our lives wanted to receive forgiveness from somebody. Isn't it amazing how God forgave you? And he should have punished you this morning by not allowing you to wake up. But he says, I'm going to forgive you, and I'm going to give you one more chance. We all, at some point, receive forgiveness. We receive forgiveness from God, from others. And we even need to learn to forgive ourselves. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't you know the number one thing that destroys relationships is the lack of forgiveness. Oh, wow. uh -huh. The lack of forgiveness.
witness is what destroys any relationship. A lot of people don't have a good relationship with the Lord because they have not forgiven God for something that happened years ago. God, it was too young. That boy was too young to die. If you were in control of everything, why did you allow it to happen? God, this, 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 this city experienced 500 deaths before the end of the year. Lord, why did you allow it to happen? All I got to say is the Lord helped me to understand is that sometimes things are just a part of life. It's the type of life that we have to fight each and every day. You know, for the new year we went to go visit my mother and there was a young lady from uh, where? Canada. Canada is one of those countries that in actuality they got it together. They don't have high crime. They don't have a lot of sick people. The government helps take care of people. They don't have a lot of crime. So when we were talking about the 500 murders that happened in Chicago, she was struck. She couldn't believe that that happened in one city. As the conversation went on, I began to realize that sometimes God blinds us to some things so that we can see some things. God blinded us to a lot of things that were going on in our lives because he wanted us to be able to see everything that we could have done something about. What am I saying? A lot of times we got to think about it. We had activities for our children. We had things for the children to do. You never saw children running around like you do today. Coming up with foolery to do. Because they had things to do. Because we are growing up in a nation of unforgiving people, we are allowing a whole generation to die out. There are repairs that need to be done. We need to begin the process of rebuilding everything that the devil has destroyed. Relationships are destroyed. We got to start rebuilding relationships the way that God would have us to do. All right. If you don't have nothing in common with nobody, the one thing you ought to have in common is the Lord. All right. If you can't agree on nothing else, agree that we're going to worship the Lord together. We're going to serve the Lord together. That then before you know it, God will allow that relationship to be met. Can I say this? A lot of people now thinking about, well, what is it going to take to repair it? I have to let you know, some of these relationships are like earthquakes just split up. They like tornadoes just blown everywhere. They like floods just swept away. But the biggest problem we got is A. Relationships will never be restored as long as anger is in the way. Amen. Anger is serious. And anger is dangerous. It can be dangerous to your spiritual growth. It can be dangerous to the growth of your spiritual life in the Lord. Uh -huh. You know, danger, anger, alerts us to an obstruction to God's will. Because isn't it amazing how you could be doing everything right for the Lord and didn't get angry and that knocks out all the things that you've done? 
You'll get that one on the way home. When you get angry, that should be an immediate alarm that I need to start talking to the Lord. What? Anger can quickly turn into some things. You can begin to make hurtful statements to others in the midst of your anger. You can become verbally abusive, emotionally abusive, and it can even turn into physical abuse. Within the Ten Commandments, it says this. Thou shall not kill. Now, you don't have to stab somebody. You don't have to shoot somebody. You don't have to push somebody off a cliff. You can destroy. You can kill with your words and your actions. Yes, oh, yes, sir. Oh, yes. You can kill with your words and your actions. You can spiritually destroy somebody with your words and your actions. Spiritual death can happen because your anger has turned into hatred. In other words, you hate not, you murder not. Go back to that radiant light. When you don't have no anger or hurt in your heart, you're just a happy person. David danced before the Lord. But Micah, the daughter of Saul, came to David with disrespect and rebuked him for praising God. Isn't it amazing how when you get your praise on, it appears that somebody always has a way of trying to bring you down. You got that position. You ain't got no business doing that. You need to be honorable before the people. You need to let the people praise you. David was praising God for what God was about to do. You know, I, I don't know, you might have heard me say this before. You know, it's amazing how people take pastors and ministers and put them on a pedestal. I'm in Popeye. You're ready to give me a two-piece. And somebody looked and said, Reverend? I said, hey, how you doing? What you doing here? What you doing here? I'm, I'm getting ready to get something to eat. I'm getting ready to get something to eat. Well, you eating places like this? Yes. Excuse me a minute. Can I get a two-piece with some red beans and rice? And, no, I don't eat biscuits. Uh, yeah, just give me a two-piece with some red beans and rice. Yeah, yeah, that's it. All right, $3 or something. And I turned back to her and said, now what you want? And she looked at me and said, well, I'm here to get a two piece. I said, give me two pieces. Give me two more pieces. What you want for that? I said, the same way that I come to Popeye's and eat, I go anywhere else and eat. And I said, baby, whatever you do, don't put nobody on the pedestal. Because the same people you see on the way up, You'll see them on the way down. Oh, yes. And she looked at me and said, I'm going to have to come to the church you go to. I said, 611 East Bird Road. <laughs> when I had to talk with Noel Jones, and he said, Reverend, come out the pulpit. He said, start worshiping with the people. Get down with the people and stop sitting in the high chair. And you will begin to see how the Lord is blessing you. All right, all right. Lord has blessed me greatly since I stopped sitting in the high chair. Right, yeah. I like worshiping. I've got him back to praising him. 
Because God has allowed me to see what it takes to be all that he would have me to be. All right. Don't speak evil of somebody. Calling them empty. Unworthy. Because you empty and unworthy to say it. Bible says don't call them a fool. Because you can spend your future in hell. In the midst of it all, you got to learn to praise God during all your trouble. All right, all right. So, Bama, no matter what you go through, just praise God. So praise God when somebody speaks evil of you. Because faith without works is dead. In other words, I just can't tell you about anger and not tell you how to avoid anger. To avoid anger, you got to take action immediately. Settle things with others before you come in to worship. You know when somebody's angry with you? You know when you are in a disagreement with someone. You know when you have hurt someone. Worship means nothing if you have done nothing, if you have done something to displease somebody else. Mm -hmm. Amazes me how people come to church and before you know it, they talk about glory, hallelujah, praise God, knowing they ain't reconciled with nobody. I'm still working on reconciliation myself with some people in my life. I don't stand here before you a perfect person. God keeps telling me forgiveness has to be done from the heart. Forgiveness isn't something that you just say. Forgiveness is something that you got to learn to live. If you want peace in your life, you got to learn to reconcile with others. Anger can spiritually blind you to who God wants you to be. Don't you know when you begin to reconcile, God says you are preparing to receive my blessings. So be wise and careful what you say and what you do. Repentance, reconciliation, and forgiveness is what is a greater offering unto God than any amount of money that you can give. In other words, when you work on your repentance, you work on reconciliation, and you work on forgiveness. Don't you know you're working on your favor with God? How many people in here want favor with God? In other words, don't you know when you're angry, anger will keep you from lifting holy hands on to the Lord. But don't you know that anger will keep you from praising God? In other words, God says we have a responsibility. And in that responsibility, you can't be all that God wants you to be if you're not talking to one another. In other words, we got to get past all the anger, all the strife. Because he said, blessed is the man that walking not in the counsel of the ungodly. No standeth in the way of the sinner. No sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And don't you know when you do these things, he says you'll be planted like a tree by the rivers of water. How many people in here want to be blessed by the Lord? How many people in here know they need to ask the Lord for forgiveness? When you ask the Lord for forgiveness, he will bless you beyond anything that you can imagine. Thank you, Jeremiah, for 
Lord helping me grow up that point. Because the bottom line is, if a baby can praise God, don't you know you got to praise God? Stop praising God for what happened in our past. you got to learn to forgive individuals for what they did in your past. And praise God for what he's about to do in your future. How many people in here know that God is ready to bless them? That God is ready to give them the desires of their heart?
devil tried to bring me down. But Lord, you picked me up. You helped me to learn that I can rise above my trouble. I know the way he said, you can be on your wings like an eagle. You can soar over your troubles. You can soar over your pain. No matter what it is, God can get you through it.
And you only do better through the word of God, don't you? You can only live on from what mama say and daddy say for so long. Pretty soon you have to learn for your life. You spoil your relationship with the Lord. Don't worry about no relationships anywhere else. We spoil them with the Lord. Then the Lord will restore relationships down here. We're walking like you know the Lord and get the Lord. We all need to start looking up to the Lord for everything that we need. Amen. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. We have the open doors in the church. Whatever we open the doors in the church. Come to Jesus. <laughs>